So during the cliffhanger, something happened. Deep Space Nine finished its run, and most everyone went on to other things. But Ronald D. Moore was invited to come join the staff of Voyager. So he joined up, and not long after, he left. He helped with the first three episodes, including writing the second one, but he just couldn't take the environment anymore, and he was not terribly happy with how Equinox turned out. There was an interview that he did later on that he, where he eventually discussed the idea that I mentioned from last time, you know, about bringing Voyager home, saying that even Braga, who was executive producer at the time, was thinking about doing exactly that. But Moore said if they did that, it would be like surrendering and admitting they couldn't make it work. Which, of course, they probably should have admitted. At the very least, it would have spared us Unimatrix Zero. But yeah, he said flat out they had no idea what the hell to do with Part 2. And so after a lot of discussion, the idea came up to have the two captains head in different directions, Janeway to move into darker territory, and Ransom to return to the light. There was just one obstacle to making this idea work. It required some level of competence, which, you know, is Voyager's Achilles heel. So with Part 2, the aliens are still attacking, and one hits Chakotay. But luckily, as a character with a strong spiritual element, he has a natural 4-point damage reduction on all attacks by spirits of good fortune. So he's only injured instead of killed like people usually are. The Equinox EMH is on hand to treat them. He switched off the mobile emitter during the firefight, so he was left behind. That means that he gets a front row seat to Janeway and Chakotay's argument, with him wanting to use Harry's theory that the Screechers are a form of communication to try to convince them to leave them alone. But Janeway wants to go after the Equinox because... Fuck those guys! She offers no reason for this other than insisting they're the enemy, even though it's the aliens that killed two of the Voyager crew, and stopping them from killing more might be helpful. You're the spiritual one. Work out how we can sacrifice the Equinox crew to appease the spirits of good fortune. I'll bring my knife collection. One of those is bound to be sacred. Ransom speaks to Seven, asking her if she'd be willing to join his crew for the few months it'll take to get back, thanks to the alien life-suck engines. But Seven wants nothing to do with him or this crew. You know, Janeway's not the only captain who can help you explore your humanity. Seven was injured, so that's when they discover that Voyager's EMH was left in the Equinox system. But that wasn't the only thing. Seven encoded the nitro burn-in part of the engines, so now the Equinox is stuck with normal warp. Oh, will they get her to talk? Will Janeway come to her senses? Will Harry find the courage to throw himself in front of one of those fissures and end his misery? Next time, the conclusion of Equinox! Hey! Riot! The plan for the second part of Equinox was pretty good. Have Janeway lose her humanity and Ransom rediscover his. Well, Ransom's off to a bad start because Seven has those codes he needs and he wants them badly. And after killing dozens of those little aliens, he's not going to stop just because Seven won't cooperate. And the Doctor won't cooperate in digging them out of her skull, so Ransom deletes his ethical subroutines, just like he did for their EMH. So, since the Doctor has professed his strong desire for Seven in the past and has loyalty to his crew, just like the other EMH did to his, of course he's happy to help Ransom's plan and destroy Seven's brain. And not because he's pretending to go along with it to just draw this out and give Voyager time. Nope, because this is Voyager, where common sense has even less of a chance of surviving than those little green aliens. And it's not like he is compelled to follow orders, because the other EMH deliberately lied to Janeway when she asked for information, saying he didn't know anything. Maybe what really gives Doctor a hollow boner isn't Seven's fleshy body, but those sexy implants inside her skull, and he's loving having the excuse to go poking and prodding them. Well, on Voyager, they try Chakotay's plan of speaking with the aliens, but it doesn't work, so that's enough of that. Time to go find Ransom and sharpen the sacrificial knife. I'm kidding about the last part, as that would actually justify why Janeway was focusing their efforts on chasing down the Equinox instead of protecting her own crew. You've been known to hold a grudge. That's not true, and I'll hate you forever for saying that. Ron Moore talked about what he thought was wrong with this whole thing, too. Quote, the th You suck! The things that Janeway does in Equinox don't work, because it's not about anything. She's not really grappling with her inner demons. She's not truly under the gun and suffering to the point where you can understand the decisions that she's made. She just gets kind of cranky and bitchy. She's having a bad day. These things keep popping around on the bridge, and we just keep cutting the shots of people grabbing phaser rifles and shooting, and hitting the red alert sign over and over again. 
It doesn't signify anything. It's kind of emblematic of the show. But having thought about it, I can think of one reason to justify why she would react this way. Something I alluded to last time in my ramble about why she doesn't have the moral authority to pass judgment on Ransom. That guy who chewed her out over the events of Scorpion was from the final episode of Season 4, Hope and Fear, where she learned of all the people who fell to the Borg because she chose to help the Borg. In the first episode of the following season, she was cut off from the crew, reclusive, regretful. When we get to Friendship 1, she seems almost like a broken person. The one thing that I see that explains Janeway's sudden extreme reaction is that she has piled upon Ransom all the questionable things that she has done since they came to the Delta Quadrant. Through him, she sees all the times that she did the same kind of thing and believes sincerely at the time that it was necessary. No, not that it was necessary. That it was right. The arguments Ransom gave her were the ones that she gave in her mirror a hundred times already. She hates Ransom because after five years of this, she just plain hates herself. You're right, I am angry. I'm damned angry. He's a Starfleet captain, and he's decided to abandon everything this uniform stands for. He's out there right now, torturing and murdering innocent life forms just to get home a little quicker. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to hunt him down no matter how long it takes, no matter what the cost. If you want to call that a vendetta, go right ahead. Meanwhile, the Equinox is hiding over a planet that will help hide them from sensors. Plus, it has deuterium deposits. Take it away, Team Noah, and see if you can localize the ore. In ore? Someday, Voyager, someday you'll figure out what the hell deuterium is. Meanwhile, the doctor's getting ready to remove part of Seven's implants, but with it, her higher brain functions will be gone. Ransom pleads with her for the codes, but she still refuses. You are unique. It would be a shame to lose you. Your compassion is irrelevant. Do you think this is easy for me? The sight of you on that table. Meanwhile, Chakotay figures with Janeway's hard on for ransom, he better follow protocol, so he submits the next idea in writing, which is good because she can now literally spit on it. He wants to go see the aliens who gave ransom the technology, aliens whom he last encountered at least 10,000 light years away, but also just happen to be 50 light years away right now. How they would know that, and more importantly, why that wouldn't make them wonder if their means of having settlements that far apart could help Voyager get home is not explained. Beyond, of course, a complete inability to give a shit. That's also Janeway's attitude. The attacks that they're suffering, which have killed at least two people so far, are not as important as finding the Equinox. Go to Astrometrics. Start looking for the kind of place you'd hide if your ship was damaged. Pretend for a moment you're a dickless coward. Yeah, that's perfect, Jacode. Well, that works because while Noah's babbling about the scenery, they wander right into a Voyager ambush and get captured. But one thing they couldn't have anticipated was the Doctor warning the Equinox, unless Tufak had bothered to investigate how the Equinox crew got their hands on phasers. Still, Voyager has the advantage. It's more powerful. It's not as badly damaged. The only drawback is that they're under constant attack by aliens that will murder them if anything happens to their shields, like, say, getting in a fight with another ship. Torres tries reasoning with Maxwell, having obviously concluded that by now it'd be easier to convince the enemy to do something than Captain from Hell's Heart I Stab at Thee to stop getting her own crew killed. Alas, the Equinox crew decides not to throw themselves on Janeway's mercy, likely because it's too small to be seen with the naked eye. So Ransom takes his ship into the atmosphere, reasoning that only a power-mad idiot blinded by their own rage would think of following when that would further weaken the shields that stand between life and freeze-dried. So yes, it's the perfect trap for Janeway, the one which requires not giving a damn whether your crew lives or dies. Finally, with Jakota yelling at her and everything exploding around her, Janeway concedes that perhaps a brief disengagement would be good. Plus, you know, we could always follow them. Not until we restore primary systems. Time. We'll need a few hours. What? That pisses me off. Follow Ransom so we can make him pay for that. 
While the crew scrambles to ready the ship for her next revenge plot, she locks Noah up in the cargo bay and says if he doesn't spill what he knows about Ransom and the Equinox, she'll drop the shields around this room and leave him to the aliens. Chakotay goes along with it until she starts actually turning the force field off and then tries to talk her out of it, but surprise, surprise, she refuses until Chakotay is forced to enter and rescue Noah. Had he not acted, Janeway would have murdered that prisoner, the same Janeway that found the idea of executing Suter abhorrent, because being an accessory to mass murder is far, far worse than being a mass murderer. I prefer to think of it as professional courtesy. But while Noah won't betray Ransom, he will talk about the aliens who gave them the technology, and in fact they have a ship just two light years away. But Chakotay has to stay after school for what he did, and Janeway argues with him, because as we've established, the crew must be punished for following unconscionable orders from their captain, unless that captain happens to be her. You are hereby relieved of duty until further notice. So to continue her approach when they find the aliens and they refuse to talk, Janeway catches them in a tractor beam and holds them prisoner until they agree to help her talk to the little aliens. But the little Slimers just insist the Equinox has got to pay for what it's done. Tuvok tries to explain that their justice system isn't based on revenge, but Janeway interrupts to say, Oh yeah, it totally is, and you can have them. Well, Janeway is agreeing to human sacrifice and warning Tuvok that he'll be confined like Chakotay if he doesn't follow whatever crazy idea pops out of her head and tap dances around the room. Ransom is feeling worse and worse about what he's doing, and it's not helped that the doctor has turned Seven into a karaoke machine. Light she was, and like a fairy. And her shoes were number nine. Herring boxes without topses. Sandals were for Clementine. Probably not help that he's singing about a young woman being tragically drowned. Ransom is spending more and more time with the synaptic stimulator. One piece of info they dropped in the first part that they actually wound up using. Believe me, no one was more surprised than I. It puts you in scenic vistas like a holodeck, but it's all in your mind. Except he's been having visions of Seven inside in human form, so that even in his escape, he can't really escape his guilt. Now get away from me. And this. No! Ah! <laughs> Ruby lips upon the water. This is a pretty hardcore origin story. Can I just catch a break? Go ahead. Janeway's found us. Also, Morla found where you hid the Snickers bars and ate the last one. Well, Ransom's made up his mind. They're going to stop running from Voyager and see if they can work together again. Not sure how that will work, since before they took Equinox, cooperate meant, I'm in charge and you're all confined to quarters. In the face of that, it's no surprise the crew prefers to mutiny than risk being back in the hands of someone who, if given a choice between killing them or live, chooses fire at will! So Morla takes Ransom away while Maxwell gets the Equinox Doctor to give them the shield frequencies of Voyager to try to even the odds. But one surprise is that Morla is actually on Ransom's side and works with him to try to end it. And when he contacts Janeway, she finally agrees to work with him, beaming some of his crew back, including Seven and the Doctor. The Doctor quickly deletes his counterpart, you know, despite that now meaning that he's murdered a fellow EMH and a holographic life form that no doubt was as sophisticated as himself. Why the hell would... All oh, right, no ethical subroutines. <laughs> Sorry, fellow isomorphic projections, you're on your own. So to force the issue, Ransom shuts down the protective shield thingy from everywhere except the bridge and where he is, telling the rest of the crew to surrender. But Maxwell figures braving the corridors is better than facing Janeway's wrath. He's probably right. The aliens just want to kill him, after all. Who knows what Janeway will do? Well, this gets them all killed, and Ransom takes the ship away to make sure that when it blows up, it doesn't harm Voyager, and that takes care of that little problem. I mean, when you have two fellow captains who have both destroyed their ships and now join the crew, it's going to be hard to decide who gets the first officer's chair. According to Regulation 197, Subsection 3, Paragraph 2, you two will have your left arms tied together and have a knife fight. Janeway informs us that the reset button is being pounded as rapidly as possible. The doctor's got his ethical subroutines back. Somehow. And Seven's brain has been put back together again, too. Looks like everyone's having a good day. Yeah, except these people. One of you will be in charge of juggling live cobras. The rest of you won't be so lucky. But she does admit to Chakotay that needlessly risking the lives of the crew in a mad pursuit of revenge might have been a brief lapse in judgment. You may have had good reason to stage a little mutiny of your own.
thought had occurred to me. That would have been crossing the line. Man, I've got you so pussy whipped. Fetch me my slippers, you little bitch. Like with the Equinox plaque, Voyagers has fallen down, also symbolizing the fall of the captain. But they put it back up because obviously this ship's going to be like new next week and the Equinox crew completely forgotten. Post-episode follow-up, stupid Neelix moment is his well-timed duck. Damn it, sight in your phasers, people. Final score for Equinox is 7 out of 10. There are some good ideas on display, but failed execution hampers the story's efforts. Janeway's bizarre vendetta is so out of the blue and over the top, it is only explainable as severe mental problems, and Ransom's turnaround seems almost as baseless. But it was good to see some more of Jakote actually standing up for the moral thing, well, most of the time, and the action and chase stuff worked well. The story just... I think Moore's common probably fits. The continuity of the show is completely haphazard. It's haphazard by design. It's not like they are trying desperately to maintain continuity on the show. They don't care, and they'll tell you flat out that they don't care. And that's pretty much the sad reason why Equinox is pretty to look at but stupid to watch. Voyager prides itself on being written to the lowest common denominator. It doesn't matter why things happen so long as it seems cool that they happen. I'm afraid.